Aloha, it's Crazy Native Stand out again with another battle report. This time I'm bringing you my first ever Age of Sigmar battle. I'll be using my Pirate Legion, which is a Zinch themed chaos army with some demon allies, and I'll be up against what came in the AOS box, which is the Goreblade Warband. This game was held at a local game store that was holding an AOS uh, kind of event where they're going to teach people. I wasn't sure if there was going to be comp, so I went ahead and just comped myself. I brought a little bit of everything just to try out different things. So I brought the wolves because I imagined they weren't that good and they were one wound. I brought the warriors because I thought they might be good and they were two wounds. I brought the dragon ogres because they're my favorites and they're multiple wounds. I then brought a unit of shooters, a unit of flyers, and then my general would be able to cast some spells. And this would give me a chance to see a lot of different facets of the game. When I arrived at the game store, I found out that there was a, a comp that they wanted to pose. It was very simple, limit everything to six war scrolls. And that's because what comes in the starter box is six war scrolls. That makes sense. So let's go ahead and jump into deployment. So I think when you read through the rules, it becomes very apparent that list building has become very reactionary, uh, much more dynamic, very fluid. And I think these characteristics of list building make the deployment phase of the game extremely important, more so than in 8th edition. Prior, uh, you would build army lists, and people would build really hard army lists that could pretty much outrock everybody else's scissors, you know, 90% of the time. In, in t until they come against their own kryptonite. And that made the game very paper, rock, scissors. Um, now, the game just still has a paper, rock, scissors you know, characteristic to it, but that feature of the game no longer begins and ends in the list building phase before you even start playing. You will be doing these paper, rock, scissors you know, battles out as you're deploying. You put down X, I put down Y to counter it, and if it ended there, then I can understand people being upset about that, but it doesn't end there. You can then put Z across from Y in response to their Y. So I think there's a lot of countering going on in deployment phase, and even after that, after you deploy all these things, you now have these... these they're not isolated on the table, your rock versus the paper. It's now, we have lots of tools on the table that can all respond to tools across the table. Now it's going to come down to gameplay. How am I going to get these tools against the rock? Rather than it just being, again, decided in the list building phase before the game even begins. So I think this does highlight the deployment a lot more than 8th. And in saying that, I'm going to start, as long as I remember to take pictures, uh, showing you the order of deployment. So my deployment deploys first, he puts out the Korgrath in the center. I, in response, put out my Screamers. This is kind of functioning like the Chaff did in 8th edition, putting out a junk unit that can move really fast and let me see where one of his more important units is deployed. So next, he deploys the Blood Warriors. Uh, after he deploys the Blood Warriors, I do make a mistake. I'll go ahead and admit that now. I deploy my Wolves next. Uh, thinking that they would be good chaff to run in there, just take out as many as they can before they inevitably get wiped out, just to weaken up that unit. Uh, in response to that, he puts out his l large horde of Blood Reavers. Probably would have been better to have my war my uh, dogs go against them. Uh, but then I put out my Dragon Ogres. I would like to see what they can do against those uh, weak guys there. Then he puts out one of his uh, characters. I believe it's the guy with the whip. And then I go ahead and put up my last unit, the Warriors. He then puts out his other character with the banner. I then put out my shooters to help me wear down those uh, Warriors a little bit for my Dragon Warriors to take out. And then he puts out his general, and I put out mine. We roll off for first turn, and my opponent gets it. So I wanted to play a mission, but this is everybody's first game, I believe, and people felt more comfortable just playing a kill-all mission. So it's going to be six turns. Whoever has the most units left over after that is the winner. So pretty simple. Uh, my opponent does go first, he pushes everything forward, and that's really going to be the end of his turn. Uh, this corn unit, uh, corn army, really functions well as one big hordish, you know, blob that sticks together. If I'm able to pull it apart, which is going to be a little bit harder if there's not a mission involved, uh, then it's easier to take these guys out, uh, you know, if you can isolate them. Uh, but right now, he's doing a good job, he's keeping everything together, and we're going to go to my turn next. 
in the hero phase, I throw Inspiring Presence on the Dragon Ogres. I then cast Bolt to Change at the monster but fail. And I cast Arcane Bolt with my Horrors at the Marauders and I kill off two. So here we go. We see how I moved up. I'm moving the dogs up to engage those Blood Warriors. Bringing the Dragon Ogres forward to engage either the monster. I'm not too sure yet. I think they'll do good against him. Or just start killing as many of those uh, Blood Reavers as I can. The Horrors move up and take some shots at those Blood Reavers. And I end up killing about four. So this is great. If there was a Battle Shock that they would have to take, they would probably lose some more. But he used his Inspiring Presence on them. So after that we declare charges. My Dragon Ogres charge the Blood Reavers and unfortunately fail. The dogs then charge the Blood Warriors. They make it in as you can see here. I then take my 3 inch consolidation move to get them even more in combat. It turns out that these bases um, still keep a lot of my dogs out of combat in a, if it's not an open area. Uh, I go ahead and make my attacks. I only do one wound unfortunately so oops this is going to be bad. In return he devastates the unit. I then take my Battle Shock test. I should have put Inspiring Presence on them instead of the Dragon Ogres. And as a result, I lose them all. So that was a waste, and we'll move into the next turn. We then go and roll off to see who gets the next turn, and sure enough, I get it. And this is definitely my favorite new mechanic of Age of Sigmar. I go to cast Arcane Bolt, I target the Blood Reavers, and I kill a couple more. Uh, we then go into the movement phase, and here's an overview of the board. You can see that I'm moving my... Dragon Ogres up closer, but I'm pretty much leaving everything else the same, except for, of course, the Screamers coming up the flank. Uh, there's really no reason I want to engage this this mass of Corn Warriors that's just benefiting from each other. Uh, so I'm going to try to whittle them down with some shooting, and that's what I do next. I go for the Horrors to shoot at the Blood Reavers, and as you can see here, I take out a lot of them, so the, the goal is almost accomplished over here. And uh, then we go into the charges, and since I do have the Screamers all the way up, I'm going to go ahead and charge them in there. I think they'll be able to handle them pretty fine. And then of course, with them preoccupied now, the Blood Reavers, I can chain charge my uh, Dragon Ogres into the monster. So here's an illustration of a very basic mistake that we can already identify in the game. Do not charge with evens. There's no benefit from it. If you charge with one unit, you get to choose which combat you're going to do, which is going to be the one combat. You're going to strike with that unit against the enemy. You're going to weaken that unit, and when they retaliate, it's going to be less damage. So as you can see in this picture, I will choose my Dragon Ogres to attack his Korgrath. I'll do quite a few number of wounds to him. It won't kill him just yet, but instead of immediately attacking with the Korgrath in retaliation, he'll just choose his fresh unit of Blood Reavers to attack my Screamers, weaken them considerably as you can see and what would have been all gains for me and all losses for my opponent has turned into a little bit of a gain for me and a little bit of a gain for my opponent at the cost of my initiative. For as long as the BSB doesn't move, his entire army within 18 inches no longer has to take Battle Shock tests. That's going to free up his general to cast his Gore Lord ability, which means each of the or three units in this army will be able to use the old Swift Stride rules. So this is going to be pretty nasty. And in addition to all this, all his weapons get the plus one attack to him. So ugh, not looking good. This is going to see his Blood Warriors charged by Zinch Warriors. His Chaos Lord charged the Dragon Ogres, and whatever his whip guy is, charged the last of my Screamers. He starts with his Lord and ends up killing one of my Dragon Ogres, wounding another one also. I move on to my Zinch Warriors and take out one of his uh, Blood Warriors, who also ends up attacking after, uh, after he dies. He then moves to his monster, does a couple more wounds to my Dragon Ogres. I then strike back with my Dragon Ogres and kill his monster. The Bloodstoker goes next, and he finishes off the last of the Screamers. That leaves this bunch of Blood Reavers out in the wind, but the other two down at the bottom right uh, are within three inches of the Dragon Ogres, so when he, ma he can make a consolidation move and uh, strike them. He doesn't do any wounds, though, and then since I don't have any units left, he just goes on to his Blood Warriors, and he kills a couple of my, a couple of my Warriors. I again win the roll-off to go first, and I put Inspiring Presence on the Warriors instead of the Dragon Ogres this time. Uh, well, here's an overlook of the board as we go into turn 3, and the reason why I put it on the Warriors is because I'm thinking about pulling out these uh, Dragon Ogres. They're in a combat against the Chaos Lord. Uh, one of the Ogres is very injured. I figured if I can pull them back and kind of throw a unit in the way, I can possibly cast them in Lightning next turn and heal them up, which would be great. 
Uh, so that's what I try to do. And as I move them up, unfortunately, the horrors, uh, I realize that my 5-inch move is not enough to really block out the Dragon Ogres completely, um, at least at first glance. And this is another interesting part of the game that I thought I would um, talk about right here, is even though the horrors are clearly not all the way in front of the Dragon Ogres um, protecting them, because they each unit has kind of a 3-inch bubble that a unit can't violate unless they're charging at them, uh, the core unit and the warrior unit have this 6 inch bubble that actually protects those dragon ogres at least from the chaos lord moving up right into their face so um, there, I think this is an interesting part of the game that didn't exist last time with only a 1 inch bubble on the units where you can really uh, control parts of the, f the field so uh, just an interesting thing that came up and uh, how my plan worked out not exactly as, as I imagined but as far as mechanics are concerned, it does work out. There's only one combat, and I go ahead and do it. And I kill off two of his blood warriors, and I think he kills off one of my chaos warriors. And that brings us into my opponent's next turn. And here's an overview of the board, and he's going to start moving everything up to get into combat. He's not going to take the chance and just go for the easy charge with his uh, chaos lord charging into my warriors. And then, of course, the blood stoker and blood reavers will charge into the horrors. We go straight into combat pretty much, and he decides to use his Blood Warriors first, which is a pretty good idea because they can strike, and then if they die, they get to strike again. It just really maximizes their attacks. So that's what he does. I think he ends up killing just one of my warriors. I go next, and here's an overview of the board so you can see what's going on. Even though my Dragon Warriors weren't charged this turn, his, his Chaos Lord did uh, get in within three inches of my Dragon Ogres, which allows me to consolidate them up and strike him. So that's exactly what I do. I bring up my Dragon Ogres and I hit him. Don't quite kill him, but I do quite a few wounds to him. And that brings us to the Bloodstoker, who really does a number onto these horrors, bringing him down to four. We then go over to my Chaos Warriors. I try to finish off that Lord before he strikes. He only has two wounds left, but I only get one through. That brings us over to the Blood Reavers, who can't do anything to the horrors, and I finish off two of the Blood Reavers. That's leaving just one guy left. That leaves the Dragon Ogres, and as you can see here, the Chaos Lord kills off one and almost kills off the other. That brings us to turn four, where my opponent does win the roll-off finally for the first turn. Uh, here's the overview of the board. There's not really much we, should, we can do, so we go straight into combat. Uh, he starts, starts off with his uh, Chaos Lord, I believe, who just whiffs or I made my armor saves. That allows me to kill off the last of the Blood Warriors. They strike back and do a couple wounds. Uh, bring, we go over to the other combat. Um, since it's my turn, I kill off the last of his Blood Reavers, and he leaves just two of my horrors left after his Blood Soaker strikes. This goes into my next turn. I throw Inspiring Presence on the Chaos Warriors. I cast Arcane Bolt at the Lord and do a wound, so that means he already had two wounds left. I must have miscounted. Uh, then we go into Pyre Legion 4, and I do the only sensible thing, and that's charge my Chaos Sorcerer Lord in combat. I honestly thought he did D3 wounds with the the wand or whatever he has, his staff, because he hit in combat. Uh, I come to find out, unfortunately, that only works if I'm shooting with it. So this was a really bad idea, and I don't recommend anybody else doing what I just did. Lucky for me, he just whips it over there, but I, of course, can't do that last wound to him. We move over to this Bloodstoker, and he's going to end up killing these last two horrors. That's going to bring us into my next turn, where I'll throw Inspiring Presence, of course, on the, the Warriors and he's going to stop my magical attempts. So since we're just trying to kill off each other, I decide, you know, let's just grind it out. I'm not going to try to pull out my sorcerer. Uh, I try to kill off that lord with all my warrior attacks. I uh, don't make it, and he ends up killing my sorcerer lord in return. In his next turn, he charges the last two of his characters into this combat. It's looking pretty bad. Uh, he strikes with his chaos lord first. He actually whiffs, or I make my armor saves. It, whatever happened, it happened that way. I then kill the chaos lord, and that just leaves me with against his other two heroes. And after a couple of combats, uh, he eventually kills off my last two warriors. So this was my first game of Age of Sigmar. It's something I've been really looking forward to, and it was a lot of fun. It was really great. Uh, it was everything I kind of imagined it was going to be. Uh, I really wish we would have played a scenario, but I can understand, you know, if it's our first games, let's not do that. Um, yeah, but it was just a lot of fun. I've never played against this person before, never saw him before, so it's good to see there's new people out there that we'll, I'll maybe get a game against now. Um, that's something I was really... I mean, I like everybody I play. I mean, that's not... I won't complain about that. I'm just saying it's great to play somebody different. So, you know, I, th I think... Hopefully, through this battle report, you might have saw some facets of the game that you maybe didn't appreciate so much, or at least maybe something you might bring into your next game. Um, I, I just think the game is a little bit more complex than people give it uh, credit for. 
I am of the opinion that I never thought 8th edition was that um, that tactical. I never thought it was that serious of a game in, in that manner. I know that some people think it's, it is, it is, and I respect that. I, I just don't. Uh, I'm not a tournament person, though, so, you know, take my opinion for what it is. Uh, I'm not saying that this game is a tactical uh, game, more so than, than uh, 8th edition, but I think it does have aspects to it that are tactical in any sense. I mean, if a game, I think this game really shines in scenarios, and I think that's what makes a game tactical, is if you're you're playing games that are scenario-based, and you win based on scenarios. If 8th edition people played games that were more like that, or went to tournaments where you won and lost based on the scenario, uh, not on victory points, uh, then maybe I would probably have lent my opinion closer to the idea that 8th edition was, you know, tactical. Uh, but people didn't want to do that. People don't like the idea of losing a game on scenarios. They want to, you know, beat their opponent down. They don't want to, you know, destroy a person's army and then end up losing. But you know what? I don't want to down on 8th edition. I still liked it. It was one of my favorite games. Uh, I will continue to support 8th edition if anybody wants to play 8th. I don't know what's going on here in this part of the world, uh, which way people are going to go, but I'm willing to play it, and I will continue to support 8th edition through Warhammer Rap. Or at least until it becomes apparent that only a dozen people are playing. So if you're an 8th edition, you know, battle reporter and you want people to see your content, you know, just give me an email. I'll try to, I'll check out your channel and then I'll put you up on the wrap. Uh, I want to do my part to help the islands of 8th edition, you know, coalesce to form some sort of federation, I guess. So, <laughs> um, yeah, just give me an email and we'll see what we can do. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this battle report. I do appreciate everybody's likes, comments, and subscriptions, and hopefully I'll be able to see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.